everyone i guess we're doing a snow review today but anyway this is a 2021 dodge durango srt hellcats uh, this vehicle's gotten a lot of press lately so the stats are pretty well known it is the most powerful version of the durango uh, makes 710 horsepower and 645 pounds feet of torque from a 6.2 liter supercharged v8 that's known as the hellcat motor uh, dodge has been offering hellcat variants of the charger sedan and the challenger coupe for a number of years now and it was only a matter of time before they stuffed that power plant under the hood of a durango uh, this is a 710 horsepower vehicle that can haul six people um it has second row captain's chairs but it has three rows of seats uh, it has an 8700 pound towing capacity as well although it doesn't appear that this one has the towing package but either way 8700 pounds is a lot for any crossover style suv let alone one that makes 710 horsepower uh zero to 60 comes in three and a half seconds and it has a top speed of 180 miles per hour the speedometer in this thing goes up to 200 miles per hour which is ridiculous but anyway let's do a little tour of the durango hellcat here and then take it out for a drive in the snow so there's also an srt 392 trim level of the durango uh, that was added to the lineup just a couple of years ago and the styling of the hellcat here doesn't really deviate too much from the regular srt model uh, you'll notice it has additional air intakes down low here uh, there used to be fog lights in these areas and they've repurposed them into air intakes here's your srt hellcat badge you'll notice the hood has three functioning hood vents here's your hellcat badge on the fender here we'll take a look at these tires unfortunately they're all season tires well i mean it's probably a good thing that they're all season tires right now but in a 710 horsepower vehicle i was kind of hoping for summer tires anyway though these are 20 inch wheels i think these wheels look pretty good and then these are six piston brembo brakes up front here you can see the srt and brembo logos on them there and then they're four piston in the back moving down the side i kind of look at this thing as the spiritual successor to the srt magnum which was really just a wagon version of the first gen well the recent first gen charger kind of has the same lines as the magnum moving around to the back racetrack taillights those have been a thing with the durango for a number of years now here's your badging so still get that all-wheel drive badge on the bottom left there and then durango it says dodge across the taillights these taillights are fun and then yet another srt hellcat badge right there power tailgate so this thing is still pretty practical. They didn't really do anything to cut down on its practicality. Of course, I've been getting 11.8 miles per gallon, so that's not the most practical thing. But in terms of functionality, it's still pretty good. So you've got room for two up front, two in the second row. You can see there's a console there. And then back here, two more. So this one is a six-seater via three rows with second row captain's chairs. Not a whole lot else back here. 12 volt outlet, provisions for a cargo cover. You'll notice all three rows of seats are red and all six seat belts are red as well. So that's kind of fun. Button to close the power tailgate isn't on the tailgate, but right here, which is pretty convenient, I think. I think they should all probably be right there. It's always a grand symphony when you turn this thing on. It's loud, there's no other way to put it. It's loud when you start it up, it's loud when you accelerate, and it's loud when you're just cruising around at 2,500 RPM. Okay, take a look at the window sticker here. So sticker price on this one is $93,150. You can see it's a 2021 Dodge Durango SRT Hellcat, supercharged 6.2 liter Hemi Hellcat V8, 710 horsepower, 645 pounds feet. Not a lot of options with this one. The red seat belts are $95. The Harman Kardon audio system is $995. High performance Laguna leather seats, $15.95. And then it's got the technology group, the rear DVD entertainment center, premium interior group, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, most of these are gonna come from the factory loaded and they're only building 2,000 of them. 
This front passenger area is actually pretty nice. Uh, they updated the interior of the Durango for 2021, so now you get this Uconnect 5 infotainment system. It looks pretty good. It's a gloss finish. It's a big screen. Uh, I found it to be a little bit laggy, and the screen itself is a little busy, but as far as infotainment setups go, this one is about as modern as you could ask for. Switch gear actually feels pretty good in this area. So you can see this one has a heated steering wheel and a heated seat. Uh, some fun buttons down here. So this is the SRT button that brings up the different drive modes. Uh, so right now we are in auto mode. Something that frustrated me about auto mode is that the paddle shifters aren't active in auto mode, nor can you turn them on. So the paddle shifters are just by default dummy buttons. You have to actually go into sport or track mode for the paddle shifters to turn on. So you can see sport mode turns that all to sport, track turns that all, all to track. I have a custom mode set up that is basically track mode, but with stability control on street because well, turning stability control off is a good way to get into trouble in a 710 horsepower vehicle. Other than that, pretty standard fare in here. Carbon fiber, which is kind of silly given that they added extra weight via rear entertainment system and three rows of seats and all that. But the carbon fiber at least looks kind of nice. It's not your traditional carbon fiber. There's more of it over here. It's like this marbled finish. Uh, not sure what that technique is, but it is a form of carbon fiber. Steering wheel is fine. This lights up red on the regular SRT model, the non Hellcat. This lights up white. So let's see. Can we? There you go. You can kind of see the red if you turn the headlights on. Anyway, uh, screen in the gauge cluster, that's kind of nice. Here's your 200 mile per hour speedometer, which is absolutely ridiculous because in normal driving, the needle just really moves between this area right here and it's not at all precise, but luckily you've got a digital speedometer so you can just put that on. Uh, you'll notice I've been achieving 11.4 miles per gallon. That's not great. This thing gets horrible fuel economy. Unfortunately, they've not given us Durango SRT Hellcat fuel economy. Yikes. 12 city, 17 highway, not a whole lot combined. That's all you need to know about that. Let's check out the second row before we go for a drive. Huge door. Like I said, this thing is still plenty functional. So it's a massively long second row door and it opens to, oh, what is that, about 80 degrees? Climbing back here, plenty comfortable. You've got screens, headphones, if you're into that, if you have kids, USB-A ports, three-prong outlet, heated second row. Here's your third row, and there's actually plenty of room back there. Uh, I reviewed a Dodge Durango RT recently. If you really wanna see the third row, just go check out that review. I, I don't think that's, that's the priority of this review. Uh, one other thing back here before we get out on the road, this car has SRT Hellcat logos in both the front and second row seats. So how about that? Oh, one little fun thing I wanted to show. So your HVAC, well, some of your HVAC controls are in here. They're actually redundant with these buttons down here, which is nice. It's good to see redundancy. I didn't think I'd be getting into uh, infotainment and button best practices in this review, but here we are, I can't help it. So I really like that, you know, fan speed is here, but then also you can adjust that all via the infotainment screen if you really wanted. But something fun I noticed, all the guys, all the guys on this screen or women or people in this screen are wearing race helmets, so. That's fun. Anyway, let's uh, yeah, let's get out on the road. Okay, 710 horsepower, here we go. Jeez. Okay, so a little bit of time has passed. I had to go get a haircut. So we are much later in the day now and much of the snow has melted. So the roads are really just wet. Uh, unfortunately, they're not dry glad that they're not snowy but we'll still be able to get some i think pretty impressive accelerations
there's 50. Now, so this thing is obviously fast. Zero to 60 is quoted at three and a half seconds. And I believe it. So that was in normal mode. That was in auto mode. We will go into sport mode for this next acceleration. Looks like we're gonna be first in line at the red light here. So there is a launch mode. Uh, maybe we'll get into that in a minute. It's kind of cool, but I've had a hard time mastering it. So here we go in normal mode. Whew. Okay, got a little wheel slippage there. Uh, when the roads have been dry, I swear, when I've hammered it in this vehicle, it's moved forward in my eyes and my brain have stayed in place momentarily. Like you get that just crazy like feeling that you can only get from something this fast. It's quite jarring. We are at another red light. So I made my own custom setting here. It's basically track mode, but with the stability control set to street because I don't want to die. Yeah, definitely quick. So unfortunately, I don't think we're gonna be able to get any really impressive hard accelerations just because it's the middle of February and we're in a blizzard and the roads are wet. So, so I have two routes that I take when I'm reviewing vehicles. I have a normal route that I'll take, you know, like economy cars on and I have a performance car route. I actually already attempted one of these kinds of reviews on the performance car route, but what I learned on that is that this car isn't really a cruiser. Um, it's first and foremost just way too loud. Uh, you could probably barely hear me at highway speeds. I felt like I was shouting when I was trying to film a review going you know, 75, 80 miles per hour up the canyon. And I found that to be telling about what the Durango Hellcat actually is. Um, a lot of times you'll see this vehicle compared to AMG and M variants of BMW and Mercedes SUVs just because there really isn't a segment for this. There isn't a segment of mainstream super high performance SUVs. Uh, you can't get a Ford Explorer with say the Mustang GT500 engine. There's no 700 horsepower version of the Chevrolet Traverse. This thing is kind of its own thing. Uh, sure, you can get the Grand Cherokee Trackhawk, which also uses this powertrain, but in my eyes, that's really just a two-row version of the Durango. Uh, well, it actually is just a two-row version of the Durango with a different bodywork and a slightly different interior. So this thing is really, really unique. Uh, they're only building it for 2021 because of emissions regulations, and they're only building 2,000 of these in total. Uh, that will keep it super limited, pretty exclusive. Uh, it's a pretty niche vehicle already. Uh, but in my eyes, I think they would have had a hard time selling more than 2,000 of these. Uh, this one as equipped is $93,000, which is insane because nothing other than the powertrain here says $93,000 vehicle. It's not great as a family vehicle. I'm getting about 11 MPG here. Uh, that's a little bit below the EPA's estimated rating, uh, but hey, I only have this vehicle for a week, so it's hard for me to resist hammering the pedal down as often as possible. But still, you know, you're not going to get more than 13 combined out of this vehicle. Towing capacity is pretty impressive, 8,700 pounds. That's on par with full-size SUVs like the Ford Expedition, Chevrolet Tahoe. So, you can kind of treat this thing like a full-size SUV. And if you do that, then yeah, maybe you're willing to accept poor fuel economy. But as far as just taking the kids to school and having a comfortable road trip vehicle, I think this thing would get old pretty quickly. There's a speed bump, uh, Bilstein adaptive damping suspension. I like it. Uh, smoothed out that speed bump pretty nicely there. There's another one at about 20 miles per hour. Car didn't really buck. Again, I am driving. The speedometer is so bad on this thing. You have to rely on the digital speedometer because the needle is broken up into 20 mile per hour increments and it goes all the way up to 200 miles per hour. So in real life, you're only ever gonna be looking at about a third of the speedometer, which means 
you're limited to a gauge that is about as big as your average fuel gauge. <laughs> so yeah, the analog speedometer in this thing is useless. But even at 15 miles per hour, I can still hear the exhaust and it just renders this vehicle more of a toy than being any kind of family transportation tool. So there is your look at the 2021 Dodge Durango SRT Hellcat. Uh, they're only building this vehicle for this model year due to emissions regulations. And they're only building 2,000 of them. I can't help but think that's because that's about how many they thought they could sell. Uh, this vehicle costs $93,000. It's pretty flawed as a performance vehicle, given that it's a big, heavy three-row family SUV. And it's also pretty flawed as a family SUV, given that it's extremely loud all the time and only returns about 12 or 13 miles per gallon combined. So it's hard for me to know what to make of this thing. And uh, I think Dodge probably knows that. Um, it's kind of just a last hurrah for the Hellcat motor and for the Durango platform here that has been on sale without a redesign for about 11 years now. I find it to mostly be fun at red lights. Uh, it handles surprisingly well, but as a highway cruiser, it's just loud all the time. Um, I had the most fun with this vehicle, playing with launch control at red lights, playing with the different drive modes. You'll often see it compared to AMG and M variants of BMW and Mercedes SUVs. And I found those to be a lot more sophisticated, obviously, and just a lot more comfortable, quieter, subtler, uh, this thing is just hardcore, crazy, insane at all times. And for that reason, I think it's going to go down as more of a niche specialty vehicle. Uh, they're only building 2,000 of them, like I said, so that means it'll be pretty rare. It'll be the rarest of the Hellcat models. I think years from now, you'll see these selling at auction for a lot of money just because there are so few of them. And altogether, it's not really a vehicle that you can make sense of, but it's just one that you're kind of glad exists. You know, this vehicle isn't great for the world, but as far as automotive culture goes, I think it's pretty cool that Dodge, Fiat Chrysler, Stellantis, whoever decided to design and build this vehicle just because of how insane it is and how little sense it really makes. So uh, that is my evaluation of the Durango Hellcat. And yeah, since I know you're all probably disappointed, here you go.